Hello beautiful people. It is Yvonne Gebauer here with my crafting therapy room. I guess I just call it my therapy room now. I'm kind of past the crafting part. Um, but I'm here with my tea. I would love to show you my mug but I would spill it if I did that. But it's by a friend of mine on Facebook. She painted it. Tommy Joe, And so I've got it on my little cup warmer so it stays hot. I've prepped a page in my altered um, encyclopedia I have here. I found this beauty at our local thrift shop and fell in love with it. So I have been using it as an art journal. So I've done quite a few pages in here. I hate that one by the way. Um, anyways, I did, I prepped, here we go, a page with some um, wall compound texture paste, whatever you want to use. And I just used my palette knife. I think I grabbed, which one did I grab here? I think I grabbed this one and just went to town. Just put it on however. This has been drying for quite a while. I adjusted my page first. And another thing I did, I never, I started out just, um, I still do that. I, I glued two pages together and I started out not taking any pages out, but already my binding is kind of starting to fall apart. So I've decided that, you know what, I'm going to start taking some pages out. So what I do is I just take two or three out every time I turn to start a new page. I just take my X-Acto knife and run it down and take out a couple pages and then um, I glue two of them together with my either my Mod Podge or my gel medium. Usually my Mod Podge because it's cheaper and it really doesn't matter between the pages. Um, so yeah, so I, I sort of kind of have a plan for this page, sort of, kind of, I don't know. Um, we'll see how it goes. I found, this is kind of, this was my inspiration, if you can believe it. What it is, it's just a, a die cut from a Tim Holtz um, die cut that I have. And I've been using it for jelly printing as a mask, but it has all these yummy, yummy colors on it. So this kind of is where my color inspiration came from. I may end up painting this tree completely black, and I think that's probably what I'll do. But I'm going to leave it until that time. I grabbed out um, what I thought were some of the colors that are um, that are in there. Um, I don't know, maybe a, a blue and a and a purple, violet, a teal, and there's some bright green in there. So I'll, I'll see where this takes me. I've got a funny shadow here. I don't know if I can get rid of it or not. I hope so. Um, but I thought what I would do is I kind of want. I don't necessarily want this whole page to be covered in paint. I don't really know yet, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, I would like some black to show through and all of that kind of stuff. So I do have a piece of the Tim Holtz um, tissue paper. So I'm just going to rip up some, try to get it as random as I can, pieces. I love that butterfly, so I don't know if I just maybe want to take some of that wing and put it on there somewhere and have it show through. Um, I've got some of the... Now, I don't want this all covered. I just want little bits and pieces on here, so I don't necessarily need it all. I'm thinking because I just want some black to kind of pop through here and there and maybe I'll just take this butterfly and just well, it's going to be the same size same size, and put them down like that. Now I kind of like this section where it's just kind of abstract lines. So there I think that like I say I really don't want it to be all perfect and symmetrical and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to grab my Liquitex matte medium and hmm, adhere. Okay so I think that that's better. I will more than likely fast forward through this part because I don't think you need to sit and watch me I think you all know how to put stuff down with some gel medium, so I'm going to just be quiet now so that I can fast forward. And you don't have to watch me do this little bits. 
Okay, all dried up more or less. Now, what I want to do, so I'm, I'm going to use a peg, piece of music paper because I'm kind of trying to maybe see if I can get some painted up background papers going here too. So I'm just going to put some of my paint colors that I think I want to use on this. Ooh. Paint goober. I love pulling those off. I don't know about anybody else. Now this one I only have a little wee bit of, so we'll see if how much I use or if I use it. Yeah, I might use it. Just little bits of that one. And then what I'm going to use are a couple of, I've got these sponges from, uh, where are they, close to my heart. And I've been watching other people use sponges. So what I'm thinking I'm going to try to do here is dab the paint on. And that way I'm kind of hoping I get this layered, textured, jelly printing look by the time I'm done. I don't know. I might be. I might be. Yeah, so I'm just going to dab some paint on that sucker and just start and see where it goes. I think I'm going to like what this is going to do. I think. I don't know. Now I'm not even going to clean off my sponge. I'm going to go right into the blue. I'm going to go over top of the purple in some places because like I said I kind of want this to look like it was layers and layers of paint that was left on this page. So I'm going to continue on with the voiceover for the rest of this page, just so you're not having to watch me painstakingly dab paint onto a, an art journal page. So I'm just continuing to add the colors, um, the green. I put those first few dabs green on, like, oh, that's a little bright. I should have dabbed it off onto the paper before I started onto my page, but ah, oh, we've got it all. We got it all blended in there. You'll notice as I continue to go along here, my page keeps, or my whole book keeps creeping to the right. And I'm not even realizing that it's going off frame. So here I realized that, you know, the little bits and pieces that I put down that I wanted to show through, I didn't want to, of course, cover this whole page with paint. Yeah, I should have known better. My air starting to get covered up. So I took my baby wipe and wiped some of the areas away and didn't want them quite that white so tried to yeah it was a game back and forth you'll you'll see me as i go through this it was anyway. you can barely see the images at the very end but oh well i tried i had an idea i had an idea i had a plan sort of as far as my plans go i don't always plan ahead anyways so here i had a little bit of the green on the baby wipe so i'm trying to dab it all over. Don't want to waste any of that paint, you know. Um, again, just adding in some more, covering up some of that teal. I don't quite like so much teal on the page. I wanted that to more be a subtle background color coming through. So I tried to push some of that a little bit to the back. I'm just continuing to blend those colors, staying away from the white that I had, had recreated. Like I say, eventually it all gets covered up. So I grab my baby, my, not my baby wipe, well, bubble wrap. So I grab some bubble wrap now and start adding in some of the pure colors back onto the page. And it looks pretty stark when I start out here, but again, it all gets pushed back to the background a little bit, but it just adds that extra little bit of dimension all over again. Um, bubble wrap, love it. It um, adds that texture without adding the layers, I guess, is what it is. And had some mini baby wrap, wow, bubble wrap, can't talk. And so adding the baby stuff as well, just to, again, add a little bit more interest 
included some white just to again add some more dimension onto my page and just continue to blend it all in and you can see my little white spots are slowly fading to the background once again but oh well it is what it is um there's my tree i thought i was going to paint it black but yeah i decided no black wasn't it white was going to be the color that it would end up being um so this is just um again i've got that white sticking out on that page and uh, i'm not a, a lover of the white so i had a bunch of ink still left in that sponge dauber so i smeared it around the edges and just toned that down a bit tried to bring back some of the white that i had covered up that didn't work and as whenever we're creating both karen uh, my good friend karen virtual she's got a youtube channel on here as well we quite often will chat back and forth as we're creating a page send each other a picture and what do you think black or white so she said yeah definitely white tree and yeah i have to agree it looked a whole lot better with the white when it was all said and done so there you go it pops off so very nicely off of the off of the page i grabbed my gel medium um i grabbed the liquitex i should have grabbed my um sorry i grabbed the maybe it is liquitex anyways i grabbed the runnier stuff that i have out of the two um i should have grabbed the thicker stuff i think it would have been a little bit easier to hold her down but anyway if you just use the six finger uh, method as i just did there hold it down as it dries it works really quite well still have four fingers left to do something else with right so there you go all done so now i'm deciding on my quote so i had gone upstairs to my computer and had printed out um, a quote on the computer um, oh but first that's right um, decided that i was gonna do all blendy blendy after all and took my sponging kind of did some blending with those background colors and liked it much better. So there's my quote. I, I type it out in a few different fonts and bring my paper to the page and decide which one I like the best. So decided on this one and then I just trim it up. I, um, I don't worry too much about it being exactly, exactly straight and just deciding on placement now don't like stark white on a page that's just me i like you know me i'm a grunge girl so i'm just um coloring it up a little bit again with some of the paint that's left in that little sponge dauber you'll notice that little package of kleenex that are sticking out from underneath the the book i don't like my one side of my surface i'm working on to dip down if that makes any sense so i'll often put something underneath that side just so i have a level working area and i've used rolls of masking tape whatever this just happened to be handy this time so under it went and it worked quite well so here i'm using my matte gel uh, i didn't want to use my runnier stuff because i didn't want the paper to wrinkle and crinkle i had enough dimension happening on this page already and didn't think i needed to add to it so here, getting it here down. And of course, you know, by the time you're done, you've got layers of matte gel on your fingertips and everything else, but that's just the fun part to, to peel it off afterwards, right? So then I'm deciding I need to, um, again, grunge it up around. So I'm using my Stabilo All, and it starts out looking quite, oh my goodness, so stark, right? But you'll see where it all blends back into the the page quite quite nicely by the time I'm done and I'm on purpose going onto the papers as well just so that it doesn't look so perfectly square and all that kind of stuff so here I'm just adding it to the page putting some water down and blending it out with my with my fingers just uh, again so it's not so perfect perfect going around the edges as well. So a little bit of Stabilo pencil water and rub it in with my fingers. I, I like the look of the black around a page and I will rarely not do that. I just think it frames whatever you're doing. 
And because my style is, I guess, lends itself more to that, um, I like the look of that. I go around the tree as well. And again, just adds that layer of dimension to the tree, makes it pop off the page a little bit better than just having it stick on and make it look like I just stuck it on. This kind of makes it look like it was growing out from the page. Wiping off the tree as I went along, because in some places I ended up with some little pencil on the tree and I didn't really want the tree grunged up all that much. Um, then I decided to take my uh, black pen. What is it called? I can't remember off the top of my head. Anyway, uh, permaball. And um, again, just to give some more dimension, then I grab my signal white pen. And I don't want like white, white star. I just want that hint of white. Again, it just adds that little layer of dimension and kind of makes those um, words on the quote, again, just pop off the page. Then I take my um, fan brush and add some splatters. Um, now, just a little bit of a tip when you're adding splatters to a page, tilt your brush, your fan brush, uh, the, the end of the brush with the fan on it up towards your face, I know, and then tap it. And you will find that the splatters tend to not fly all over the place. Now this is where I go back to real speed. On my little journey, um, we'll see how long this video ends up and how much I end up having to cut out. Um, give me a thumbs up, subscribe please, uh, that way you get notified by email when I do upload a new video. Um, follow me on Instagram, I'm starting to use my Twitter more, we'll see how that goes. I've got a blog, I might even blog about this, look at that, hey? Uh, but all of those links are going to be in the description below, below, how do I want my fingers below. Um, share if you liked it, that would be awesome, tell your friends. Um, but as always, I very much appreciate you coming along on this little journey and love reading your comments. I try to reply to them all, um, so thank you, bye bye.